Hello guys, um, I'm Ken, I'm from AI Singapore. So today we are at FOSS day number four. Um, I'm gonna talk about RPA today and basically I developed an open source RPA tool called Tag UI. Um, I was previously from DBS, Hewlett Packard, um, ADP and ASTAR, I spread up. So while I was DBS, I basically worked in a automation test uh, test automation job. So what I do is to write test cases uh, automation such that whenever there's releases, there's upgrade. Instead of a manual tester, you know, sitting in rows to test the application, placing thousands of tricks, I write programs to do that automatically. So I was there for one and a half years, then I decided to uh, leave uh, the company to basically go to Eastern Europe with my wife and develop open source version of RPA. So that's uh, my story. Then I, after I came back, I joined AI Singapore as an engineer and to continue developing the open source RPA by adding ML capabilities, DL capabilities, while keeping it open source and free. So uh, I'll start with a demo, what's RPA? RPA means Robotic Process Automation. And if I summarize it in one line, it's basically trying to replicate a human behavior and interaction around user interfaces, basically the front end of the applications. So those will be mouse clicks, uh, key press, and so on. So some time ago, my wife wanted to change a new phone. So she wanted to pick the best number for M1. And you know, from M1 website, you can actually you know, select the numbers and see what's the list of numbers available. So I use a tool that I made and basically uh, run the automation to get a list of nicely formatted Excel spreadsheet of the available numbers from M1 and also the price for each number if you want to purchase. So let me, let me show you an example of that. So I run the automation by just double clicking on the icon. Um, now it goes to the M1 website. Uh, let's say she wants to select a number that's uh, ending with 8. So you notice that over here, it has selected 8. And then now, it has uh, automatically select search. And in the back end, it's actually trying to grab all those uh, available numbers and their price for each number. And you can execute this tool from command line, from API, from web service. It has an inbuilt uh, web server already. Um, of course, now I'm running in a verbal mode. You can run in a quiet mode where you only output the results you want. So it's running through. Now this is the demo. In the actual case, actually running through a few thousand records for six hours. So after running, uh, you will see that it, it start to click Outlook and actually start to do the automation of the UI to send the email of the spreadsheet to myself, for example. So all this typing is actually done by the automation tool. Uh, it's done by visual recognition. Basically, I look for you know the, the toolbox, the subject, and type in stuff inside and attach. All these actions are actually automated. So this is a so-called RPA, the industry term of RPA. So now I send a mail out already, but um, I think NUS mail will take some time to send out. So while um, it's sending to my mailbox, I'll show you an example of RPA from a commercial perspective. So UiPath recently got funding for uh, series B and they got like 100 over million dollars funding so their valuation now is uh, more than a billion already it's a unicorn so they develop commercial RPA software so you see their version of RPA is uh, something similar like what I'm doing just basically replicating the user interaction on the UI on the front end so there isn't any back end integration basically purely on the front end so in this case uh, they are trying to automate the entry of uh, invoices and so on yeah, you see all these mouse click, key press, and uh, key strokes. All these are uh, automation. Okay, so let me go back to my mailbox. I should have received, yeah, this is the mail that is sent out my, my uh, outlook just now. The whoever attached are the lucky M1 numbers. So, uh, you know, so I open the file, I can see the numbers that's been uh, extracted from the website. And this is an example of a simple personal use case. In businesses, they can use RPA for other more repetitive competitive, um, competitive stuff like uh, maybe dealing with invoices, dealing with CRM entries, data entries. So all these type of processes can be automated. Okay. Um, yeah, incidentally, um, I have a user, power user recently, he's uh, called Yu Chen Huang. 
uh, is from NUS Institute of System Science. So, uh, in fact, yesterday, Saturday, when I went out, when I came home, I, s I saw like 10 email requests from him on uh, support and suggestion. So, basically, last night I was going through it, making new comments, upgrades, and so on. And I, I finished at like, uh, 7 30 a.m., uh, catch a few hours of sleep, and then here I am. And you can see here, there's so many other email replies, replies now. So I think he's one of the earliest uh, adopters for this tool uh, and uh, really great to be able to you know, help him uh, improve the tool to uh, let him do what he needs. Uh, and incidentally, he's also pairing up with National Library to implement this tool right now in some of the professors. Um, there's also an accounting firm that I'm working with now to implement RPA uh, in their work processes, but it's under uh, uh, NDA, so I cannot say the company name and what we're doing right now. Um, globally, uh, okay, you search Tag UI, uh, you can go to the GitHub project page, and yeah, so this is the project, um, 2,000 over stars, and maybe top 0.01% of the GitHub projects, um, yeah, so basically this is the Tag UI repository, uh, the name you can search Tag as in tagging the user interface, and if you see the logo. I'm a fan of open source. So it, it, this thing may look like a, you know, it's meant to represent two things. First is like a robot with two eyes. And the next thing is you can see actually, I'm not sure whether it shows up on the screen. There's actually a letter L here and this is a letter T. Well, why L T? Because I'm a fan of Linus stores. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I put that as an Easter egg into the logo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it starts totally, yeah. And you see behind the screen, uh, there's only three stickers, GitHub and uh, Tux, or Linux and uh, yeah, my organization. Okay, so, um, yeah, so basically this tool can do stuff like taking human languages, there's 20 over human languages you can write your automation script, Malay, Chinese, yeah, Hindi, uh, some Eastern European languages, some European languages, the Chinese and so on. Um, it converts it into automation code, uh, visual automation, uh, uh, character recognition, uh, there's a Chrome extension for recording your actions, uh, integration with Py, uh, sorry, R and Python. Um, yeah, basically easy to integrate with API calls. So uh, let me show you a little bit more. Uh, so this was where the tool started. Uh, this was when I joined DBS, that's me, um, three years ago. I was like 25 kg heavier. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> ever since I joined DBS, I lost a lot of weight. Uh, <laughs> working too hard. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this was when my first contact with UI-based automation. Because over there is my first contact with automating the test cases and uh, user interaction on the front end. Uh, and when I was there, I thought maybe there's a more value in doing all this UI automation on production system because over there I only allowed to touch staging you know uh, development system never production so I think it's more exciting to do on production so uh, I, I, I was actually uh, becoming the team lead for the new agile team but I, I know that um, you know I got to find something more exciting to do so I resigned and packed my bags go to Eastern Europe with my wife for a year um, and this is Serbia I was there most of the time uh, this is Nikola Tesla Museum uh, although uh, Tesla made his name in US, it's actually a Serbian yeah, from Eastern Europe. Uh, you know, stuff like home cooked food in Hungary, in Hungary Budapest, uh, attending some of the meetups for machine learning and uh, AI. Uh, I was in Chiang Mai for a while because uh, it was too cold at some point, so I couldn't kind of take it. We just spent two months in Chiang Mai, then we fly back. So most of my time was spent just coding purely from the first line of code in uh, December 2016. It was uh, open source right from the start. Yeah. I find it's a great way to, uh, as a distribution channel, so that I can get feedback and keep iterating and iterating. So there's been 13 releases so far. Uh, the code has been used by thousands of users. Uh, I don't track uh, because open source, I can't really track the downloads, but for NPM, it's over almost 20,000 downloads now. Um, assisting installations about 1,000 plus from peripheral data, yeah, because I don't really track, I can only estimate. Um, this was when I was porting from uh, I basically code in Mac using a VI, so I just porting to, over to Windows. Uh, yeah, it's cross-platform, so you can use on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, which is not usual for commercial RPA tools. Commercial RPA tools, they solely focus on Windows. 
Uh, this was when I was at a co-working space in Chiang Mai. It was 4 a.m. I, I pretty much a night person, so I it was just go through the night and go home at the, I say in the morning and sleep. Yeah. <laughs> this was uh, when I was at in Serbia, Novisa, very beautiful city. Um, yeah, my wife. Uh, then I got back, and then the, my story with AI Singapore started when I got back. I spent a few more months to finish up the code until it's production ready. Then I met this, this director from AI Singapore, Mr. Lawrence Liu. I was trying to tell him, um, I'm going to go back to work for soon because doing open source, I, I don't have income for one year plus, so my service is all the time. Uh, he was saying, uh, I'm forming a new team. Would you like to join me? So that, that informal meetup became an informal interview, and that's how I joined AI Singapore. Right, uh, you can find out more about AI Singapore from our website basically is a government funded organization which tries to make it easier for uh, organizations in Singapore and public sector in Singapore and private sector in Singapore to enjoy the benefits of machine learning and AI. Because usually AI and machine learning has a very high entry barrier in terms of hardware, in terms of your talents, in terms of your skill set. So we want to make it easier for people to do that. So there's a lot of initiative under this uh, project. Uh, there are three trusts, three, three different trusts. I belong to the one under industry innovation, which is to deal with uh, close, more closely with the private sector. So as part of my job there, uh, my mandate is to continue developing this tool, uh, keep it open source and free by adding machine learning features. Yeah, so that's uh, part of my role there. So basically I will be the one that's conducting workshops, doing training, doing marketing stuff and development and support for the user requests. Okay, so uh, let, let me go straight uh, directly to what's the uh, RPA. So maybe just a background. Okay, so just Yeah, basically robotic process automation is automation on the UI layer. Um, it's purely software automation, it's not really physical robots and so on. Although now I already purchased a, on my own account a robotic arm I will, and uh, some camera, I would like to integrate this type of automation with the physical world. Then it's more exciting to me. So I'm trying to do that in my own time right now. Um, so robotic process automation in reality is not real physical robots. Yeah, in deployment, you probably see a, a row of laptops running the VMware or whatever that's running the automation in the background. Um, this is uh, what I meant. It's mouse clicks and keyboard entries. Our group Prism is one of the earliest. Uh, 2001 it started. There are two unicorns right now, group Prism and um, UiPath. They are both robotic process automation software providers. Uh, the market size is 0.5 billion right now. It's going to 2.5 billion in a couple of years time. Sorry, yeah, four years time. Okay, uh, let me forward. Um, opportunities and challenges. Uh, the question is, people ask why now when RP has been around for so many years? Uh, one of the reasons is, is close association with AI and machine learning. So it becomes a, a potential for certain tasks to be automated, especially those tasks that are huge volume and repetitive in nature. So that is why right now in adoption, mostly banks, insurance, uh, in Singapore's context, for example, DPS, Singtel, uh, JP Morgan, NOL, Service Cisco, uh, those are the companies that are using right now. And a large part of the reason why it's all the large enterprises is because of the entry price to use RPA. A typical installation will cost uh, more than 100000 per year. So unless you are a large enterprise, the uh, SME can't really come up with this type of budget to do this type of uh, automation. So uh, I, I thought it would be nice to have an open source alternative. So I started developing the code and hope that uh, maybe for SME who want to enjoy the benefits of this type of uh, automation that's emerging, um, but can't have the budget to purchase those expensive software and uh, expensive consulting firms, then at least they have an alternative in, in the open source world. Uh, these are the commercial vendors. Um, this slide actually, if you search Tech UI and go to the repository, you can see here under Prezi slides. Yeah. So you do have to take notes. Yeah. I mean, you can just Google Tech UI, and from the home page, you can see this Prezi slides, which is what you're seeing here. Um, and you also see an RPA workshop, which is a two hour workshop I conducted last uh, week at my office. Um, basically, it's a run through of in an hour, what, how you, how to use it, uh, what can it be used for? Uh, yeah, 
if it's guided, it'll be great. But if it's not guided, you can run through by yourself. It should be pretty uh, straightforward to understand, especially if you've got a developer background. Okay, let me close it for now. Um, I will not run through the video demo here, but just uh, to let you know, um, there is, uh, where's my Chrome? Yeah. But just to let you know, there's a Chrome extension for it, which you can download on a Chrome website. And basically it lets you uh, record your actions, what you do with the websites and help you to find a website identifier and so on and make it easier for you to write automation script. Basically, if you start recording and you stop, at the end is an executable script that can run directly with the software already. Okay, let me close this and close this. Um, so I'll just skip forward. And this is some other demos, but I'll, I'll just do it live um, to be you know, more interesting. So I'll skip through this as well. Um, so these are the key features of Tag UI. Um, the architecture diagram, for those of you who are technically inclined, uh, basically is built on a suite of open source tools that are mature and established, uh, well supported uh, mostly. Um, I build integration to Chrome directly through a native uh, CDP so that I don't have to go through uh, another library. I also have uh, the most shortest direct path of the automation tool to Chrome so that I have a better control. Otherwise, if there's a bug in the midstream, I, I, I can't chase that guy because it's an open source contributor. And what happens, he will become the bottleneck of my tool. So as best as I can, I want to build direct integration with uh, what I'm working with, the, the, the other software and libraries I'm working with. Same for R and Python. Uh, there's native integration in with R and Python and a schoolie for OCR and visual automation. So let me okay, just go back. Uh, these are some of the uh, these examples. So I will go straight into doing demos. So it's a CLI tool, but basically you can run it from a desktop icon, you can run it through a REST API call, you can run it through a you know, schedule window, task scheduler, or Linux, Mac, you can run it from Chrome tab. Um, yeah, basically from various channels you can write it. And it has an inbuilt web service server already. So you can just enable it right on Linux and um, Mac OS. Okay, uh, let's go to samples. I'll try to run a Yahoo sample. Um, I run it using Chrome. Well, by default, it runs headlessly, but you won't be able to see what's going on except the text output. So let me run it in the foreground so you can see what's going on. So in this example, I'm automating the process of going to Yahoo, search for GitHub, then taking some screenshots, and um, go to DuckDuckGo and type some stuff. So all these actions are actually automated. So I'm capturing a screenshot right now. Um, in the back end, it's doing all this stuff. There's log files to track exactly what's going on, when's the runtime, how long it takes. And now it's going to DuckDuckGo to type some other stuff over there, you know, and capturing a screenshot. Okay, um, all these are samples that's already inbuilt as part of the repository. So right there, um, if you go to flow sample, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. What does this sample do? What does it teach you about the tool? So it covers pretty much the different functionalities of the tool. Um, I'll show you another example of GitHub. Sorry, uh, I should write in the foreground so you can see what's going on. So this example, uh, the tool goes to GitHub and tries to download a repository to my hardest. So it goes to GitHub and all this action of clicking download and saving the file is automated. And then download Z. And so the file, is, all this is automated. And then um, at the end, it, it does a API call to show how easy it is to make, it's make an API call. It's a one-liner basically, API, blah, blah, blah. And then you get a response and so on. Of course, you can make complex API calls by adjusting the header. That's supported as well. Um, okay, uh, let me do another one. For those of you who are in website testing, you can do stuff like test automation. I'm doing a test, um, sorry, I should run in Chrome so you can see in the foreground. So now I'm going to Yahoo, do some um, validation of search and results. So when I run it in the test mode, it automatically checks uh, all the test cases that you want to test and the results and whether it's pass or fail. Uh, there's a negative test case at the end, so you'll see. Um, okay, so let me open the file. What I want to show you is, if you run it in test mode at the end, you will be able to see a XML file which you can 
pass on to your CI tools. So let me drag it over here. Uh, yeah, over here. Okay. So you can drag it. Uh, you can sync this XML file with your tools such as Jenkins, Circle CI, and so on for your test automation needs. So that's uh, some other examples. Um, I want to show you integration with Python. Okay. Because it's hot. Basically, you can code directly Python code in this automation script itself. So this is Python code. You can call it by saying py uh, the Python code you want to run and get the result, or you can do stuff like py begin. Then you have a huge chunk of uh, Python code with your machine learning library, and then you show the results. Okay. So I run it. Uh, run the Python code. So an example of such use cases would be you get some inputs from a website or application. You train a machine learning model, for example, for loan approval, loan applications, and then you get the decision. And from the decision of the machine learning model, you take certain action downstream, some other application that you want to automate. So, in a sense, you can funnel an end to end process from beginning, uh, inputs, you know, some decision making, and outputs. Yeah. So, let me close this. Uh, another example will be our demo. Okay something like this. So yes, integration with R for those of you who are data scientists. So what happens is in the back end, I write R library, uh, basically a lot R interface to do the syncing, the communication to tag UI. And same for Python. When running Python, I'm actually doing a, a backup process to talk to tag UI. Same for the school for visual automation. Um, the last demo I want to show you is the, let's say maybe Chinese. Okay. Um, so you can write in 20 over languages. It can be as simple as changing the default language you want to use. And uh, basically, because I built the tool, and how you do translation is you use Google Translate and capture whatever words and so on. So after I built the tool, I use the tool to build itself to generate the 20 over languages by going to Google Translate and you know, get the results back. Um, but I only manually check for Chinese and English. The rest, I'm, I'm not familiar with those languages. So I try to do a demo for the same Yahoo, but in Chinese. So it tries to run the same first example Yahoo, but now it's running it in Chinese. So you see all the Chinese character here. Uh, let me queue it, uh, and I change it to some other languages. Let's say I want to run in, I don't know, um, maybe German. Let's say German. So I can, for a script that's written in Chinese, I can easily run it in the third language: uh, German, Vietnamese, Serbian, Polish, and so on. So it's a very straightforward to use and easy to maintain for users in their own natural languages. All these are will be in German. So yeah, I have a couple of minutes left. I can take some questions. Otherwise, um, later on at the backstage, I can you know have a sort of one-to-one -one conversation. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah, I have one. Uh, so I saw the GitHub repo. Uh, it seems like Tag UI is built on PHP, right? Yes. Uh, in fact, in order to make it work, I got to learn PHP. The translation engine is in PHP, but the automation code is mostly in JavaScript. Okay. I got to write shell and batch and Python for visual automation and uh, this uh, Python integration and R. Yeah, Any so specific reason for using PHP? Um, easy, straightforward. I can get the stuff I need directly without adding a lot of stuff to it. Okay. Dependencies. Yeah, I usually try to minimize dependencies. Yeah. So okay. uh, I have a question. So I have done a lot of similar work uh, using Phantom JS mm. uh, and then sh shifting to Nightmare JS. Mm. How is it different from Nightmare? Okay. Uh, basically, the underlying framework here is Casper JS and Phantom JS. Okay. Nightmare JS is based on uh, Electron, mm. basically, but the newer one would be Puppeteer. Yeah, for, for, for yeah, more up to date releases. So, what's the difference? I guess those are more for test automation in general, but for this tool, I try to make it such that, um, for example, if you go to the home page, you see how to use it uh, and under cheat sheet, you can see all these English looking steps. Basically, the goal is to make it as easy as possible to convert an idea, a flow that you want, in simple English, in your language, English, Chinese, whatever, into an automation code. So. Um, let's say you have this few lines of code, uh, language. At the end, you, what you get is hundreds of lines of JavaScript code that runs. So basically, it is a, like a translator that runs, basically. Yeah. So okay. that's the goal. Whereas uh, for those tools, you basically still need to do your programming and your coding. Okay. 
Uh, also, I have a question for AI Singapore. Yeah. So, is it supporting people uh, over uh, all over the world to come and uh, you know, um, contribute or learn? Right now, mostly we are supporting the internally Singapore local system to try to build the capabilities locally. Um, so, it's, it's sort of English language, or you can talk about it in your own language. I wonder if it could be useful for people who maybe are not, maybe not able to use a keyboard or a mouse so easily. Have you tried putting an uh, NLP processor, uh, um, a microphone in front of Thank you. Okay, yeah, that's a question. In fact, I designed a CR assistant so that you can actually run Tech UI in the conversational type of syntax. Um, but there's not a lot of uptick in this right now, but I assume that this can be something that's used for people who want to voice control using Alexa or maybe uh, go home and so on. It's possible. But I haven't uh, come across an actual use case somebody coming up to me saying, oh, I want to develop this. But yes, it, it has a framework already that's supporting this style of NLP based on uh, uh, execution. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, uh, otherwise, it means uh, I see on the board, it's for web, right? Websites. Yes. So, yeah. what about the mobiles? Uh, Mobile devices. <laughs> Uh, for mobile devices, you can use using the visual automation. Let's say you run an emulator on your desktop, and then you can interact with all those things. Uh, the same, right? Through emulators. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And uh, it can automate your desktop apps, like for example, Outlook and all this, yeah, through visual recognition. So, so instead so of calling the identifier, you call the, you give it an image, you look for the best fit image, regardless of the screen resolution, and then you click on it, or read text from it. So what what behind I mean for the UI device so for the UI device or, or this application so how it get the element on the UIs? Uh, oh okay. If it's for mobile devices, it will be through visual recognition. So based on the certain image of the text box of a button, you try to find the best fit for the element and interact with it. Is it about text or about image? I mean image. Correct. Uh, and then to get the text, the image is captured and you OCR is used to convert it to text. It's uh, all in built. So what about multi language? I mean, uh, for my apps, uh, it supports six language. So for different language, uh, I must write a different script or the same. Oh, OK. I get what you mean. Actually, you can uh, use a common uh, reference language, which is it is like a DSL, a domain specific language, we get, which you can write in normal user English. So these are very standard UI interaction descriptions, like click, tab, you know, save, load, and download. Yeah. So it will be all these languages. OK, one more thing. OK, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really uh, enjoy about automatic desk for our app. OK, so uh, uh, compared with uh, some other platform like uh, we try to blue stack. Do you, you know blue stack? Right? Um, no, but the uh, uh, I don't know blues. Uh, maybe. Uh, recently, uh, if you are doing process, yeah. if you are doing cast automation, I recommend take a look at Cypress. Yeah. Okay, okay. They are gonna. Uh, I think they are gonna be a leader in this field. Okay, I will take a look. Yeah, Cypress. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ken. Uh, no appreciate. Uh, next up, uh, yeah.